So as you say, right, Java is programming language, right? See, I will only give you the uh, information that you require, right? I do not want to overload you with the other information. So Java is mm -hmm. a programming language which used to do the program. Programming we can do in other languages, right? So what are the other languages we have? We have C sharp, we have Python, we have JavaScript, right? So all those mm -hmm. other languages we have, but Java we normally prefer to do the programming language and for other uh, purposes. Okay? But as a part mm -hmm. of the QA automation learning, this is more than enough. You need to understand what is Java and how where we use the Java, right? So we use the Java to write a program. Right now, let's start understanding what is program. Program, right? You understand the program. So, what is programming? Right? So, what is programming? So, there are many kinds of programming, right? That we do. But let's we understand from programming, we cannot take this word. What is program that we can write from Java? Okay. So, hmm. program is a, I will just, just say, is bundle of line of codes. Okay which hmm. achieve certain accent. So this is my definition, right? This is what we see. You have to define something in your words to always remember. So program means, means some uh, a bundle or the uh, bunch of code which help us to perform certain action, right? So now hmm. again, let's we take an example of, we will go to this one, right? We we'll go to this one and we will open this Google, right? Now see, what you can see over here that is called designing, okay? You see the login mm -hmm. button. So somebody has designed the login button. The border should look like this way. The font should look like this way, right? But what exact action that Google search will do that is done by the programming, right? So right. when somebody mm -hmm. type over here, automation testing, right? So you see, after typing, if I click on this Google search, right, it will perform mm. the search operation that is done by the programmer, right? So right. we have wrote some kind of code to see how the action is going to be performed, okay? Mm. So this is called program for a program, right? And now mm. this kind of small, small program will come, come together and they will achieve some bigger action, okay? like registration, like uh, mandatory field checks and all those things, they will perform, right? So many kind mm -hmm. of program will come combined together and they will achieve a big action, right? So now when we write some program, right? When as I say code file, right? So code file will be defined as a dot Java file, right? And then that dot Java file, let's suppose I'm just writing the search button. So this search button dot Java, I will have a code for search button. Okay, how the search button is going to be work. And this is called code file. This is called extension of that file. Okay, so Java file will normally come under like this section. Right now, see, first of all, you need how to install Java, right? And all those things. We have many tutorials. You can easily go and install Java. If you face any difficulties, just let me know. Install Java, install Eclipse. We will not waste our time on that part, right? Because this is not the reason of our trend. I want you to become an automation tester. But those things you can easily follow the instruction next, 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 and you can configure those things. Okay, by yourself. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that is that will be your part of your assignment. Okay, to install Eclipse and install Java and make sure Java Please. is working fine or not. Yeah. Hmm. Actually, I had already installed. You had told me in okay. a previous. Uh... Then perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. Right. So Java is already installed. That is perfect. So let's read start learning the actual programming side okay so first mm -hmm. of all see programming we need to understand from very basic okay we write a program and we need to execute the program so there are the th couple of steps that we need to understand first write program right write program or i will just write a code right then compile the code compile the code Execute code means program. Okay, now onwards you understand like this. Okay, so what is happening? We write a code, right, with the pro Java programming language. Then we compile that code, 
and then we execute that code. Okay, this three action will be for any programming language. This is not about Java for any programming mm -hmm. language. Okay, write, compile, execute. Okay, so for writing, we use Java syntax. For compiling, we have a JVM, right? Java compiler uh, and all those things which compile the things and execute. I do not want you to uh, go in that much deeper, but let me give you some basic. When we write something, we are writing a line of code, right? Line of code. Now you know each and every programming will have their own syntax, right? The syntax they need to follow. You got my point. Mm -hmm. The syntax they need to follow. So what will happen? Uh, what will happen uh, when? Uh, okay. What the recording stuff? So syntax they need to follow means some programming standards. I will just say. Define, right? Define by the company who developed that language. So, like semicolon, right? Semicolons need mm. to be after the end of line, then syntax to define a function, right? Anything if you are not doing as per the standard of that programming language, right? Let's suppose if I am a, uh, I will show you that things practically, but let's suppose I am a developer, right? But I forgot to place semicolon in certain place and all those things. So after writing a program, we do the compilation of code, right? So this compilation of code will find this kind of error. Okay. Kind of mistakes, right? That we, hmm. right? Like if we forgot to maintain some standard, we forgot to maintain uh, like the, the uh, like I would just say is the semicolons or any syntax that we have put wrongly in our code, then it will get highlighted, okay? That is called compilation. Mm. Simple, like basic check. That system do by themselves. Okay. Then we execute okay. the code which will perform the actual action. Right? Perform mm -hmm. the actual action. So always it will be always in this facet. Okay. First write, mm. then compile, then execute. Okay. Right. So this is what about not Java, but for any programming language. Okay. Now let's we start from the very basic. Okay. How the program works. Okay. So you already have uh, this Eclipse installed, right? So what I'm going to do, so let's we create a one new project, right? Where we're going to write our Java code, okay? So mm. file, new project, right? And over here, you can select Java project, click on next. I will just say Snehan Java. I'm just giving the name. Then just make sure Java is installed everything. We no need to change anything, right? Just click on next, mm. right? And just say start create, right? And you know. So you see over here, Snehal Java practicals got created on my lab project explosion manner, right? So over here you mm. see two things. JRE library means these are all the Java related library got uh, automatically added to my project because I created Java project, then what source folder, SRC means source folder, where we gonna write our code, okay? Now okay. let's we start from the, we will learn the topics of Java as we go, right? So first of mm -hmm. all, let me just show you what is package, okay? What is package? Mm -hmm. okay, so now we will learn about Java, what is package? Okay, so package is nothing but a kind of folder help to structureize the code. Okay, what is package? Okay. Package is nothing, right? It's a kind of folder we have, right? To structureize mm -hmm. our code. Now suppose if you have any your like uh, this is in your routine thing, like, right? When you have a pen drive and you are saving your data for a pen drive, right? In your pen drive, like, like you want to keep keep a backup of your all the memories, right? Then you create a mm -hmm. different folder like school time photos, then college mm -hmm. time photos, then employment time photos, something like that, right? Wedding photos and like my uh i would just say uh when i travel to dubai those kind of folder you create separately why you are creating a separately because it will be easy to maintain right if somebody says yeah. okay um yeah just show me your photos when you are in dubai so you know which folder you need to open right so yeah. package mm -hmm. package over here work exactly same right it will help us to structureize mm -hmm. our code so we can easily locate our code and easily find our code so now in SRC folder, I'm going to create a first folder. Okay. 
first package yeah. so just right click new and go to package you see and this icon mm. is also a, like a folder just click on package okay now the package i'm gonna just say is a simple project okay simple program mm. like in java we have three kind of program so first of all i will just say simple program okay i am gonna write only simple program over here right so what is mm. my simple program let's we create our first class okay so how we create a java class now you understand this package concept yeah now the second we're going to create a class but before creating a class let's understand what is class so what is class in java any thoughts any idea no so class is like a, our class basic very basic class is like our classroom right we have our classroom where we can see our class right like standard eight standard nine standard ten and those kind of class right so class what we have class we have a different kind of object in that object mm. means students okay, okay. Mm. just relate it with real time example what is class the class is nothing but it's a collection class of room. object now make object. a definition collection of objects okay the class is mm. collection of objects, right? With really different kind of object, right? It can be the different kind of student, right? Some of smart students, some brilliant student, and those kind of students, right? Now, mm -hmm. what is object? See, class you understand, right? What is object now? So object is instance of class. Instance means it's a part of class, right? It's a like copy or I will just say something that has been derived from the class. Make sense? Okay. These two mm. definition on one screen makes sense, right? Class is mm. the collection of object and object is the instance of class. Part, right? yeah. part of mm. class. You can also say part of class because students are somehow related with the class, right? Now, mm. in a class, right? What we will have, let, let, let's say is in a class, what we will have in, a, in our classroom, let, let's suppose. So what you can see in our classroom, can you tell me? Like normal in our classroom, what you can see? What the things we have in our classroom? Blackboard, whiteboard, okay, okay, duster. Okay, okay, okay. What about blackboard, whiteboard, duster, then chalk? Yeah. Then table, a desk. Yes, chair. Desk, desk, chair, tables, then fan. Mm. Then what else? Windows. Right? right. These are the many things we have in our classroom, right? And who gonna access this information? Right? Who gonna access this information? Who will access like who gonna use this information? Teachers and students. Yes, and students. So teacher and student will become object of this class. Make sense? Okay. Hmm. Make sense, right? Who are going to object right. of this class? Teacher and student because they're going to access this information. Hmm. Right? Now in a Java class, very basic, in a Java class, this is our classroom. Our Java class. So what we have in our Java class, I will just say different variables, okay? Constructors, mm. right? Constructors, blocks. Then I will just say a nested class. Okay. So very basic. Yeah, these kind of things we can understand. Okay. In our Java mm. class, we have these things, but this is too very important. This tool is very much important. Okay. And now to access these things, right? What we need to do? We need to create a objects, right? Mm. We need to create an object, right? To access this information, right? So so far so clear. What is class? Yes. Class is a collection of object. What is object? Object is the instance of class. If somebody asks you, always keep this basic example in your mind this is what 
will make you to define those things objects this is class the class contains multiple things right mm. okay so now we're going to create a class so i'm going to right click and it's very simple to create a class right click go to new and you see class you see class create a java mm. class just click on that and i will just says what is a class then so i want to understand about the variables so basic variables okay this is my simple mm. class name i'm going to give and you see the modifier public package private protective no no we will talk about these things right then it's a super class just nothing you should ignore this one interface we will learn it later and you says which method stuff would you like to create a stuff so i will always click this one public static void strings okay? yeah public mm. static void max and string argument okay and i will just click mm. on finish okay so this is the basic structure this is the basic structure of any class right so you see okay. it just says package so from which which package it is belonging it is under simple package right simple and this is my public class and class name that we give right basic variable and this is my one of the method which got auto created public static void main right and this is the argument mm. okay so now what is public static void main right this is the i will just say is simple word right execution point right we need accelerator to uh, to uh, drive our car right we need to accelerate that one like how it going to be executed so this is the execution point right so whatever is written be between these two bracket that part of code will get executed make sense okay ha huh. yeah if something is outside of this code this two line public static void mm. main it will not get executed now let me just show you so i am going to write simple line okay system dot or you can just say so sy so and enter space right so over here is not allowing me because i am trying outside of class but let me okay inside of class that's why so okay you see it automatically mm. comes system dot pretel now i will just say learning java from basics okay so mm. learning java from basics so i want this slide now if i copy this slide over here right you see both the line right and i will change this one but you see this line is giving me error what is the error if you mouse over multiple market uh, same that error inside identifier simple you know, so it is giving me some kind of error right why because this is defined in class right this is not allowed so i need to define this is the main method right this is my method execution point this is also called main method okay so this is where we need to write our code which is got executed so i cannot write like this way i will ignore this okay and i will just keep this one so this is my first program right and i will right click run java application understand this java application i will run and it will show me in a console right in a console output it will, it will show me whatever line i have written learning from java okay acha yeah. so this is how you can write a simple line. okay now let me down this execution point and main method this one this is our basic because after this session right the next topic that we going to learn is about git git repository why i want to show you git very initial stage because whatever the program we going to write right i want to upload in our git repository so next session will be about git repository okay i want okay. to whatever file i am writing in my laptop in my repository i want to give it to you right so you can download mm -hmm. the same code file and you can make a necessary changes so this is how we going to practice okay actual practice how we going to do i will uh, commit my push my there and you can pull the request from there i will show you i will teach you each and everything about git as well okay but this is very okay. basic 
okay this is how you create mm. a class this is how you print a simple line right now let's we talk about the basic of variables so i'm just going to be just says this line i will just says like this learning about variable now what is variables right what is variables so first of all the question will come about what is variables so variables is nothing right the variable is something that we used to store the data you got my point variable we used to store the data right like in our mathematics right we you know we when we when we was learning a mathematics right so we just normally just says a is equal to 10 and b is equal to 20 then count the sum of that two right this is very basic we have if you also see your kids right if your kids book right they says a is equal to 20 and b is equal to 30 then what is sum no. of that then they give like for like a primary or the school uh, like in a school they will give like this kind of book as well right this is this mm -hmm. is the value and what could be the answer what could be the answer a plus b yeah a plus b right so if you want to mm -hmm. see the sum a plus b the sum will be 50 so how are you going to do that mm -hmm. so over here you see this is called the variable right mm -hmm. this is how they have on paper but if you want to define the same thing in a programming this is called variables right so variables will have a two things first variable so variable is used to store the values always understand okay variable is used to store the values take any registration form anything right where we have age age is a variable name let's suppose age is equal to so my age is equal to 32 okay so i will just say age is variable name Which remain right. constant. Understand this part. Hmm. Constant, right? Then thirty-two is variable value. Value exactly. Can be changed based on the person, right? So this is one hmm. of the basic field, like mobile number, the first name, last name. Everything is a variable, right? You got my point. Right. So two things, two mm. things that variable will have: variable name and variable value. Value. Now, so, suppose if somebody else is putting their age, right, and the age would be twenty-six, so it, mm -hmm. the age would be changed, but the title of variable will remain the same, right? Same. Age twenty-six mm. will be changed, right? For, suppose mm. if I am filling some form, I will give thirty-two, but somebody else is filling the form, they will give their age, right? Their mobile number. Right. So this is mm -hmm. how the variable work. Okay, so variable mm -hmm. is something that we define to store the value, and where that value gets stored in our RAM memory, right? In our, in short, in our machine, in our laptop, mm -hmm. right? In a, we do not want to go that much deep, deeper, but somewhere it did get stored in our machine, right? so we can okay. use in a future right we can use in a okay. future right so let's start to create a variables basic variables okay so now first of all let me give you the variable a is equal to 20 i am writing down in the same way okay b is equal mm. to 30 right but see it is giving me error so this is how you should learn whenever it give error this mouse over right This is create a local variable. Okay, create a parameter. Okay, so this is the this is how and you see over here it is giving some hint. You see this value it is giving some hint. So it just says integer. You see integer. So what is the third thing? Variable type, data type. That is again important, right? So now suppose this age is a variable name and this is variable value, but to store this one system should know how much memory how much byte need to allocate right so for that one what we will have data type you are getting my point yeah okay so what kind of different data types we have right 
so there are many kind of data type we will have we will learn in detail right we will learn in detail but as of now understand primitive data type right i will just use dp and the non primitive primitive data type and non primitive data type okay two kind of data mm. type we will have okay now see you you understand why we require data type because i am telling a laptop to store this age 32 right now laptop says okay in my laptop i have too much space right but tell me how much space you required for this one to store this one okay okay so we need to tell okay it is an integer value so i required four bytes it a string value i required eight bytes right so it's size mm. like we buy when we bought any new house right we have a size so this is what exactly they are uh, asking so this is exactly it is giving us error and if you mouse over on java error right it is also suggesting us i think this is missing okay okay perfect so that's a reason that the data type is coming to the picture okay now what is hmm. data type so primitive data type and non primitive data type so there are two type of data type like what is a primitive data type so let's we talk about the primitive data type okay so primitive data type are first of all as the suggest integer 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 so why we use the integer to store the integer value right what is the integer value hmm. like 0 2 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, something like that right we use to store the integer value then we have what we will have we will have uh, string data type right then we have character data type then we have boolean data type then we have other things like we have float, doubles, like doubles, uh, all those things we have a data type. Like string, we uh, store a string called name, right? Ankit, then character like A, B, C, D, right? We want to store, it will come under single comma, right? Then boolean, what is boolean? True or false. Float. okay hmm. yeah float like we will want to store the data like you know decimal point right the double will be the big uh, integer so these are the different data types that we will have right which required to add a floating or decimal point in a system okay hmm. so integer string character boolean float okay so these are the primitive data type okay if somebody asks you what are the primitive data type you should tell them and how it is defined right so i'm not, do not want to give you that much of uh, like the knowledge of system but this is try just to understand so this is defined based on the memory the default size they allocate to the system right so suppose if you're in using integer right so integer will take a four byte integer will take a four byte okay right like uh, byte is a unit of size right you're gonna use mm -hmm. like we have 10 gb pen drive 5 gb pen drive so four byte it's gonna take right the string we have string will take another one right the character we will take two byte then boolean will take one byte so this is different chat that we can easily find but this is a basic concept okay so that's the reason mm -hmm. we have to give the data type with the variable to tell the system this much of space I required to store this value. So this is called primitive data type. Now, what is non-primitive data type? So classes, the classes we, uh, we define class, right? Because actually the mm. class is also gonna store in the system, right? Then mm. interface, we learn in later that arrays. So all those things we will call non-primitive data type, okay? Primitive and non-primitive. Okay. Now somebody says, okay, what is a primitive data type and non-primitive data type? You will have basic idea. Okay. 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 Now let's we correct our mistake. So I will go over here and I will just say 
integer i will just say is integer and integer right now you see as soon as i write the integer the error gone right and it is if you mark over over here it says the local the value of local variable is not used means this is just defined right and it is not used anyway now mm -hmm. let me just tell you the concept of definition define define the variable so and declare the variable understand this is really a useful concept define and declare so how are we going to define so let's suppose integer a or value one okay value one this is called define value I define right, but I have not declared the value. Understand? I have just defined. Now, value one is equal to twenty. Value okay two hmm. is equal to thirty. Okay. Make sense? Hmm. Right. Define and declare clear. But over here, yeah. you can also write in a in a this way as well, right? Where define and declaration. One line. Okay. Hmm. Now suppose if I forgot this one, right? If I forgot this one, so system is very much uh, clever. It gives us this. You see, system. So this is called compilation. If you remember, I wrote Achha. my code. I wrote my code. Mm -hmm. I forgot to do some standard, right? If I make a mistake, like I it just says mm -hmm. instead of integer right i am not sure but i write like this way integer right so okay it is giving me error so what is error so you see it says it is also giving me some solutions you see info or what keywords you want to use like chain to integer you see it is also mm -hmm. giving me the solution as well when you mouse over but i am not sure and i am just going to execute this code so before execution system will do the compilation right and you mm -hmm. see and this all compilation problem right so system give me the error in the console this is unresolved compilation problem and integer int cannot resolve any data type and syntax error insert semicolon to complete the statement right so i have to resolve this one i will remove this one and i will make semicolon so you understand right compilation yes yeah. this is what compilation mm. will do Like uh, we are learning in a smaller chunk, but it can be a bigger one. Okay, so this hmm. is my value. Okay, this is my variable. Now, what we gonna do? We gonna define different type of variable we will have. Okay, so we will some example we will see later. Okay, but we will do okay. over here. So let's suppose integer. I will just say integer age. Okay, then string. string then i will just say name okay string will be the name then what we will have character uh character i will just say gender right mm. then what we will have here merit status okay okay let's keep let's understand this for as of now this is more than mm -hmm. if you understand this for it is more than enough, okay So now we yeah. need to declare. Okay, now we want to declare. So I will just say age equal to thirty two. Always remember for integer you no need to put single or double bracket. Just put the value like this way. If mm -hmm. you put like this way, right? If you define integer like this way, system will give you the error. Just mouse over this is type mismatch. Cannot convert string into integer because this is how you define string. So for integer. You no need to give any bracket. Then for name, mm. I will just say Ankit Rajapati. Okay, same. Mm. Then gender. It's a character. I can just M. Right now again on a M, it is giving me error. So just click on this one. What is the matter? Just create a constant M. Right, like this way. You okay. see, this is not possible. You have to give a single quotation. So. This is how character defined, right? String will have double quote, character will have single quote. Understand these things. Then mm -hmm. married 
status okay hmm. i will just say true okay because over here it will only take true or false because it's a boolean mm-hmm. right let me just write it down fine I don't quote. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Single quote. And boolean and integer don't need coding. Uh, quoting. Yeah. And boolean will only have two values, right? One is true. Okay. Two value only. Or false. Yeah. Hmm. And without. Okay. Now, if hmm. I want to write the same thing in my word, right? How I can do? Just h is equal to thirty-two. M is equal to I will just say thirty. <coughs> this is also true, right? Hmm. Yeah. Character gender. Is equal to single quote M, right? And then this is billion marriage, right? And then this is true, right? This is also true, but it is giving us error. You see, it is still giving us yeah. error. So what is the error? Mm. So let me mouse over. It says duplicate local variable. See, this is mm. one of the restriction. Why I am doing these things? You understand from error, right? Duplicate local okay. area because this is already defined name. We cannot define mm. name again. You remember, and right? And if the values are changed, then values are that that is fine. Values can be changed if you that 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 is the reason I wrote over here. You see, remain constant. Mm-hmm. Value can be changed. Okay, yeah. so I will just say is age one, name one, gender one. Where? You see, it's just resolved here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now I want to print these values, right? Now I want to print these values. What I can just say is system dot out dot print ln, and I will just give first age, right? Then I'm just copying this statement to save over time. Okay. Okay. Now I want to print my name. So name. I want to print the gender. Then gender. I want to print this marriage status. Marriage status. Okay. Then over here I want to separate it. So I will just put this one in a double quote. Okay. Always print in a string. So I will take double quote and separate this one. Okay. Now this is print. Ln means. Next line, always understand. We also have simple print, okay, and print ln as well. So print ln will be simple line. Let me quickly change this value over here, right? Twenty six. I will just say is Virat Kohli. And then I will just in a. I will just over here. I will just say false, okay. That will be this one. Okay, something like this. One. So. Now, so see what we are doing. We are just printing all of them. Okay, so I just copy paste all the system dot print ln and just printing in them in the next line. Ln means next line. Okay, and mm. we need to give variable name to print the value. Okay, and now if I right click and run as a Java application. Okay, you see first we print this line right. Learning about variables. Then my value thirty two, Ankit Prajapati. M true, then again this syntax, right? This syntax, then twenty six without fully M and false, right? So this is how we can print this value. You got my point. Now, let's. This is basic of variable, right? You got my point. You understand, right? The character, integer, string, and boolean. Now, yes. let's learn about methods, right? So, I will create one simple. I will create another class. Right, basic method, method or function you can call anything. Okay, basic method. Mm. Now, what is basic method? Okay. What is method? So, method. Let's suppose 
we make a tea right so to making a tea we have a one method one process right so that process we follow and we achieve a good tree right so that is also called a method so method we have multiple line of code which we used like reusable code when we just is reusable code right now that we can store in a method okay now hmm. how this can be useful let me show you so this is my class public state basic method is my class this is my one of the method right this is man method man method okay. and yeah. i want to uh, yeah just a sec just a sec yes so this is my man method and what is the man method it's a point of execution of our code okay now let's we take an example to sum a two value okay so i have integer value one is equal to 35 integer mm. value two is equal to 48 i want to do a sum so to store that value right 35 plus 48 I need third variable, okay, which is called mm. result, okay, and in result I can just say value one plus sign value two, okay, and send one, okay? and I will just say system, and I can just say result of two values sum is equal to. And what I need to pass to print the value, the variable name. So this is the variable mm. class. Okay. So whatever the result we have, it is gonna be passed over here. Okay. Now okay. if I right click and run this one, right? It will give me the 83. Right. Okay. Now suppose now another client come and change the requirement. Now this is I do not want to do the uh, like this one. And I want to modify this one 48 to 96, right? 96. So this is my method. Okay, and I will again that and see the new result. Okay. Okay. But see, I want to create these things in a method in a logical way. How I can create a method for this one? Okay. So let me just show you that part. So this is basic, you understand. Okay. This is very basic, you understand. Now I want to create a method which will give me the sum of two values. So I will just create a method. This is how you can create a method public. Then I will just say void sum of two number. Right? And to do the sum of two number, what we require to do a sum of two number what we require uh integers two values simple to do mm -hmm. the two values two value, we require two values mm -hmm. so i will just yeah integer that is correct integer a or value one and okay? or i will just keep it uh, number number one and integer number two okay mm -hmm. and this right. is my method body so this is how you write a method understand okay so let me write it down over here. So first you will have access modifier modifier, which is public. Then second things you will have return type. Okay. Means hmm. void is equal to do not return any value. Okay. And if you use hmm. integer boolean string primitive data type right then it will return value okay hmm. then let me write it down like this here. okay and what what is third over here method name method name then in a small bracket basic method parameter Parameters, right? So if you hmm. see, 
if you see these things, right? So this access modifier would be public, private, protected. Okay, I am talking about mm. this one, public, private, protected. Hit and type, right? Second one would be void. If it is void, that means does not return any value. If it is integer, boolean, or something like that way, it will return a value. I will show you the different method name, right? This could be the user defined, whatever user want to define, user define, and the parameter which we are going to use in a method, right? Mm. So now I have number one and number two, right? And I want to do the sum, okay? So what I will do? So I will just use this line over here, right? I will use this line over here. And I will just directly, instead of result, I will just say is directly this one, number one plus number two. You got my point? Okay. Hmm. So it will directly print the value. Okay. Now hmm. what I will comment this part. So how you can comment this part, uh, like Java, I think to do the multiple line comment, right? In Java, multiple line comment you want to do. So what you can use the syntax, there is one syntax that you can use just this and start okay so comment will start from over here and it will end over here okay so whatever mm -hmm. the code we will have in this comment section right it will not get executed you see this is single line comment right double slash okay. means single line comment and this is mm -hmm. multiple line comment now i want to call this method in my main method see this is also system dot out dot print LA. If I right click and run a Java program, right? If I go to my console, nothing got printed. Why? As I told you, right? This is void man, man method. So whatever return between this man method will only get executed. So what I have hmm. to do. I have to call this method in my main method, right? Right. I have to call this method. So how I can call, I can just use this simple name, sum, and I will give two value, right? 25 5 and 45, oh, right? You see, mm. I can call like this way, but again, it is giving me some error. You see, it says, cannot make static reference to the non-static method. So this is non-static method. You got my point. You see over here, we have public void, right? We have not used static. You see over here, it says public static. So our main method in Java is static method. And in static method, we cannot call non-static method, right? And okay. if you want hmm. to do it, this, it, it's give the solution. Change sum to the static. If I click on this one, you see, automatically add the static keyword. Right. Public static, right? And if I remove this one, error will come again, right? Mm. So how you can resolve this one? So if you remember this concept, object, right? Mm. So I have on my method, you see, in the Java class, I have my method and variable. Now I want to create an object to access this method. So how to create an object? This is really important. How to create a object, right? So object mm. will have syntax. Remember this one. So first you need to give class name, object name is equal to new class. This is the syntax you can create an object, right? So over here, what we will have as a class name? Can you tell me what is our class name? Basic method. Exactly. So what I can do over here, basic method, right? My class name, then I need to give an object name. So object name, it is again user defined. You can give any object name. So I will just give object obg, right? Is equal mm. to new then again class name basic method right and semicolon mm. right 
so i created the object and why i create the object why we will we will have a teacher and student to access to use mm. the property of class so i created the object to use the property of this basic method class this method right now suppose okay. if i just says obz dot right and you see in a list it give me this option and mm -hmm. now if i pass this two value over here right this two value over here and i will remove this one this time it will not give me any error even though i don't have static over here why because in a non in a static method if you want to call any non static method you can create a object of class and you can achieve that things right so this can be the interview method interview questions can we access non static method in a static method band method okay so mm -hmm. directly we can not use but if you want to use we can create a object of class and we can use it make sense okay yeah yeah now if i run this one right if i run this one it will give me the sum of the object right and why it is just giving me like this way okay i got you this is again one that it's a good learning right so see this is again the one limitation of java right when you use this plus operator with a string right when you use the integer with a string it will do the concrete operation it will not do the sum operation you see so what it it, it did in the result you see Need the concrete operation twenty five. It considered as a string. So what we need to do? Okay. Just put in a bracket like this. Okay. So now mm -hmm. it will first do the sum, then it will print. So now if I go right click and run as a Java application, it will do the result value, right? Okay. If you do not mm -hmm. use this bracket, it will concrete the value. If you use this bracket, then it will do the actual. Some of that operation, and this is hmm. my method, right? And this is how I call my method. Hmm. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. What is yeah. class name? What is object? What is static and non-static method? How we can define the static method, right? By using simply keyword public static, right? We can define the static method. So far, so clear. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I want to focus on this one, right? Okay, let's just find some space, right? Find some space over here. Why I want because this is what we have. Okay, this is what we have. Right now, how object syntax? Right, how to create an object? while see when i write something this is really important to understand so what is the syntax of object class name object name is equal to new okay this is the syntax we use in object now we we are not going to repeat the same thing in the next class so i want you to just focus and understand this this is a syntax to create a object okay so what we need in our in our example what we need over here this is how we create our method object for basic method right we create the object of our basic basic method like this way now what is the syntax to create a method right so this is the syntax to create a method method so let's right how to create a method so this is how we can create a method right? always remember this thing this is again optional right this is again optional the parameter is optional okay stay here The parameter is optional. 
-hmm. We can have this parameter or we can have just the blank tool. Okay. But this is the way we can give the method, right? And what is the main thing? Like if you see this one, right? This is the access modifier, public is access modifier. Then this is a return type. That information you will find it over here. Okay, so this is also very much important. Right? You need to always make sure you have this one. Just wanna make some space over here, right? Object to access this class. Then let me make it distance that down. Because this is this is good to have in the one screen. access modifier then we have return type then we have method name then the list of parameters as I said which is good then okay okay your hmm. time, this can be blank as well just change it to the next side How it is given. Right? So if this is optional, right? If this is optional. If this is optional, if this is optional, then we can also have our method name like this way. Public it is a sum of two number right like this way mm -hmm. if you do not want to pass any if you want to just simply print any value you can also have this way public void like this way right if you do not want mm. to return any value so this public will become access modifier then this is become method name right now suppose i want to return a value right so what i will do i will not delete this part i will make it comment here now I want to write the same method, but I want to return some value. Understand? I want to return some value. So what we can do instead of void, we can put integer. Right? As soon as I put integer, it start giving me an error. Why? If I mouse over it, says the method must return a result. Right? So what I can do over here, I can just simply just say is return number one plus number two okay, yes. okay. Mm. what my point so what this will return because i define integer and you see over here if you use integer it will return some value so it is returning the value number one plus number two right make sense yeah yeah so now suppose i want to call this method what will happen right i will just commented this one right or i will keep this thing as a like is it right and if i do like right click and run and java application why it is not printing the line why it is not printing the sum over here can you give me oh. any view why it is not printing the value over here Because see, initially what was happening, let me tell you. Initially what was happening, the method itself have a print statement, right? So it is hmm. printing a value, but this method don't have a print okay. statement. Print and that's the reason. So what I can do, if now I want to call this method, so this will return me the value 70, but we have not instructed the system to print it. So I will copy this everything and I can do mm -hmm. like this way. You see, 
Hmm. And I can do like this way. I can use this same body over here. And I can put like this way. So you see what is happening? The value, whatever the value is, it is coming from this method as a part of return. It is printing now. So now if I right click and run as right, it just says result of sale. Right? Because see, okay. the method was working fine, but it has returned the value, but it has not given any statement to print or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is called call by object. This is how we can call by object. This is how we can create an object, right? And this is how we can create a method which will return a value. Everything is clear. Mm. Basic uh, variables and method and class and all those things. This is see, this is the very basic of programming, and this is what you need to be learned, right? This mm. is if you become master, how to do these things, how to create a class, what is class, what is object, how to create object, what is method. What is different type of method, void method, integer string method, return value, not return value. All those basic concepts is more than enough for you to write a Selenium script. You got my okay. point? Mm -hmm. You no need to be a developer, you no need to go in that much depth, you know, but understand this basic concept. What is called class, what is called main class, what is called functions, right? How we can call the functions and all those things. Okay. So okay. yeah, so let's keep these things as of now with method and variable class and object. In our next session, which will be tomorrow, we will mm -hmm. learn about for loop if and if else condition that two things. Then we will talk about string operation and the basic of arrays. Okay. Okay. These things we will cover tomorrow itself. I will give you mm. the assignment by tomorrow end of day. Okay. Mm. So as of now, you don't need to do any assignment. Just keep relaxed. Mm. Okay. Do the API things that I have given to you. Just try to finish that API things. Then okay. do this assignment on the next. But when you mm. do it, understand it. Okay. I will form some kind of assignment for you. How you can make a good practice on this one. Okay, Snail. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. okay. So let's keep these things as of now, and I will share this according to you. Okay. Yeah.